Okay, so first some announcements. Uh, in your emails, you should have gotten this from the principal, the administration, where um, it gives you some important updates, um, the parts that apply for us. That's all of it, but down here it's like, okay, um, right now everything's like optional until April 13th. That's when teachers can require work and um, you have to do things for grades. Now, some teachers have already gotten started on that. Uh, it's technically not okay according to our principal in the district, but uh, those are your other teachers. I haven't given anything that's required yet. I'm still waiting for April 13th and waiting for more instructions from the principal and the district. Um, if you know anyone that needs uh, a computer, you can tell them to go to school tomorrow from 9 to 12. Um, today's window is already passed and they can pick up a free Chromebook um, on loan. Then uh, whenever school starts, whenever it happens, then they can return it. Uh, AP exams don't apply for you. Um, they are given at home this year because of the COVID situation, but as freshmen, uh, most of you, I don't think any of you are taking APs. Okay, now this is the interesting part. A schedule that will start next Monday, April 13th, and attendance and all that, uh, how you'll get your stuff from your lockers, how you will uh, pass the class, all that stuff comes out April 13th, because I'm sure some of you may have conflicting times on when teachers are meeting, so the principal will give us further instruction on this. Um, so keep checking your emails. I'm still waiting for this notice too. This is all I know at the moment. And then, yeah, so there's some little updates, a little email from the principal, and then over here um, in Piazza, you should know that I posted a review, okay, COVID review, looks like this, and it'd be great if you could do this online or via quizzes. So over here, a little bit more review, solving for certain variables. Um, this one might be a little bit hard, that's okay. There's unlimited retakes and the answer key is towards the bottom. Um, this next set of questions is around today's lecture. How do we uh, move functions around? And then over here, you have things around horizontal and uh, vertical lines. Uh, again, there's three mastery questions at the very bottom. If you can solve these, then you should probably skip the review because those are the harder questions. Again, all this is optional. And the new stuff, okay, is this quizzes. So when you join, it's like an online quiz giver thing. So there's, it's like a little game, kind of like a hoot, but you can take as much time as you want uh, with this. Um, there's music, there's sound effects, there's memes if you want to enable them so you can start working through these. It's the same exact questions as on this handout, but some people uh, prefer the handout versus like this kind of interface. Okay, just like multiple choice, game, see I got it wrong. And then I can see all your data on here and there's no time limit. You can take as much time as you want. But what's nice about this tool is that I get to see uh, which questions you got wrong, how long you took on them, and I may use this if I were to give you a take-home test. Um, notice it's all multiple choice, and then towards the end, um, there is some free response stuff. So um, something for me to explore. So do go to Piazza, click on this one, this link down here. If you can, try that out. If you like your traditional pen and paper, you can go here. Um, there's the PDF, and you can work through. Um, the review. Okay, questions on these two resources? For those that just joined, um, this is, uh, I enabled some new buttons in Zoom. You can say yes, you can say no, you can say go slower, go faster, uh, hand clapping, thumbs up, thumbs down, um, all that's there. You just click on manage participants. All right, so uh, my Algebra 1 students, um, those are my announcements. Make sure you can find that stuff. And for today, I decided to mix it up a little bit. I have a little PowerPoint to give you on this optional topic um, this week, since it's still optional work. Um, since it's still optional stuff, um, 
it's not required just wet. I'll wait till next week to finish up chapter eight about parabolas. I'll um, talk about things that are um, that we might have not uh, haven't gotten to. Like I have never taught this for algebra one yet, and um, it'll help you uh, later on in your math classes. But it's okay that not everyone's here to listen to this. Uh, okay, how do you do question fifteen on the COVID nine review? We can talk about that um, later. We'll do this first. And so you'll see from this um, slide that there's some ideas present. Uh, there's, let's see, I don't know how to annotate on here. I think I have a pointer. Okay, cool. So I have transforming functions. That's the first big idea. How do you move things around? What happens to their equations? The next one is inverses of uh, linear functions. You'll see this in Algebra 2. And we can start talking about this in Algebra 1 a little bit. And then some statistics, you will um, not see this on your final if we are giving one, I'm not sure about that, but you will likely see these kinds of uh, statistics on your SAT uh, tests and uh, in your future classes. For sure, if you're thinking about taking AP stats in the future, um, course selection ends April 10th, then um, this is a preview of what more things you study around there. Okay, so um, maybe after today and then a little bit tomorrow, you should be able to answer these questions. Can you describe um, each transformation? What happens when you add two to your function or add two like this? And how what happens when you multiply uh, your function in this way? So we'll start with something uh, familiar. We have Linear functions will start, uh, my examples are all with lines, and then I have some practice for you to think about what happens if they're not lines. Mm. Um, all the functions we've studied so far have growth rates and starting values. So you can see here in this equation, right, f of x, which is just like y, equals mx plus b. What's b and what's m and x and y, what does everything represent? Think about that for a second. And you see um, the b value is your y-intercept, also known as the starting value, the initial value. You have lots of different names for your slope. That's the growth rate. Um, all cool. Um, y is typically the output. x is the input. y is the in dependent variable. x is the independent variable, uh, so on and so forth. Um, also wanted to remind you of function notation f of x. We'll be using that uh, a lot. Okay, and if you were to draw a graph of it, it looks like this. You take your y-intercept, place it right here along the y-axis. You go right one. Okay, pay attention to the scale. Every grid line isn't um, worth one unit. So it's like five grid lines equals one unit. Go right one and then down two. So then from those two, uh, you can piece together um, what equation this is. Okay, so think about that for a couple seconds. And you'll see that the equation should be uh, f of x equals negative 2x uh, plus 1. Change in y over change in x down to right 1. So here's the, the main question. What happens when you add 1 to this function? And there's two different ways we can add 1 to this. Here's the first way. Okay. Notice um, down here I have f dash. Okay. Um, you read that like f prime. It is um, related to our original function f, but it's a little different. That's why we have dashes here. Okay. So you read that f dash, f prime, f prime of x equals all this stuff. And you notice here, there's our plus 1. And you can simplify that, you get this equation. And that's what it looks like algebraically. And I want you to think for a couple seconds uh, what it will look like on your graph. So I needed a bit more space. There's the same stuff. More specifically, how does the function move? Does it move up? down, left, or right. And if you can participate by typing either one of those words, how does this function move? I'll participate in the chat. And for those at home, uh, you can pause and think for yourself before I show you the answer.
Okay, one response. That's good. So um, you're right, student. The function it moves up by one. So every single output um, that had the same input now moved up by one. Oh, where's my line? Okay, well there should be a line going right through here. I guess I messed up my animation. So it should go like this. Okay, there it is for some reason. So it was our um, red and now it turned into our purple line. So it moved up one unit. And so how, um, why is that? You can see so from the algebra. You have your original function here and you'll notice up here is the box uh, of work from the previous slide. We add one like so. And hopefully now you can see where it happens. Okay, um, I think I technically should have left this part off. Okay, Every, um, the y is being is growing by one. It's plus one, uh, going upwards. Notice here your y-intercept is the one that changed. Your slope is the one that stays the same. Okay. A short example with lines, uh, why we start with lines, that we know them the best, they are simplest, before we move on to more complicated cases. Okay. So far so good. Okay, so uh, we can also add one a different way. This one's a little bit more complicated. Notice now, instead of adding it on the outside of our function, where we're, we are manipulating y, the up and down directions, now we're adding one like this. Notice now it is next to um, the x. And you have a similar question. How does this function move? Up, down, left, or right? And I'm adding one like so. So think for yourself for a couple seconds, pause the video, you can type in the chat if you're here. Okay, any takers? How does this one move when I add one like so? maybe it moves down okay you know for sure it's not up so it's either going to be down left or right so let's work through this and okay we think it moves down cool well, let's see what actually happens with this example okay this one actually moves one unit to the left Now, um, for those that said going down, we'll go back to the previous example, okay? Um, if you were to, let's see, where do I want to go? Like here, right? Uh, moving down is going to be adding negative one or taking away one. But notice now it's going to be added over here. Not right next to the x, it's out by the original function, it's next to y, okay? So, um, those that think, uh, how do you move like this original function, negative 2x plus 1 down, um, it would look like y equals, or f of x equals negative 2x going down like so. And then you have a line that goes like this. Okay, and then back to this uh, weird one. When it's right next to the x, when we're adding here, it actually moves left. Okay, maybe some of you were thinking, okay, in your heads, does it move right? I'm seeing an x, and I'm recognizing x plus 1. Isn't that right? Uh, in the right direction, positive x axis. Well, let's see what's going on here. All right, you could have thought it was moving up uh, or down, left and right. All those are potential options. So there's our original function. Here's another way to think about it. So again, our first step is this one. That's the uh, new part. And then you go through with some algebra. This is the what it would look like in function notation. You distribute these x's or this negative 2 over 
Okay, that's where the negative 2x comes from. That's where your negative 2 comes from. And now, here's your original. And then down here is your uh, new function, okay? Adding 1 right next to the x. This is how we move something left. And let's see if that's right. Well, here's your y-intercept of negative 1. You go up 1, 2 and then left one. Okay, change in y and change in x. Yep, it still has the same slope. It has a y-intercept of negative one. Great. And let's try to see that another way. Um, from this step, um, this kind of previews the next topic of inverses. Okay, um, from a table, we can see that here are your three values, and I think they match the arrows that are up here. You have an x, uh, of the original line, okay, that's the red one. When you have x of 0, you can see f of x, or y. The y value here is positive 1. When you have an x value of 1 half, you see that it has a y value of 0. And then over here, when you have an x value of 1, and you go down, you see that you have an, um, a y value of negative 1. Okay, so that should be familiar so far. And here's where, oops. Okay, so for this part, um, notice now uh, we think it's a left and right change. Notice that when we move left and right, the y coordinate stays the same. Um, this is really showing like um, why it goes left, or at least it's one way to show it, why it's going left using a table. So there's your next step. This is like our new y. Um, what happens after this transformation when we add x like so? Uh, we leave these y coordinates the same and we're wondering, okay, how did we get here? Thinking about the inputs now. So this is the part where I wish I had my pen, but I can't show it out too much. But <clears throat> when we undo this original function, yes? We know that this whole thing, so looking across this row, um, if we know that our f of x plus one or our y value is one, okay? And then we're gonna try to get this part by itself, okay? So we're solving for this bunch. So the first step to get x plus one by itself is to move this thing over, okay? So you subtract one from both sides. Okay, one minus one, that's zero. And then you divide the whole thing by this negative two. One minus one is zero. Zero divided by negative two here is zero. And that's how we undid this uh, f function. So from here, we know that f of x plus one is zero. So pretend there's a zero right here. We are isolating this part. We're solving for x plus one. That's what we're interested in. So then there's your zero. Take away one from both sides. Okay, so now we have negative one equals negative two times the quantity x plus one. Divide both sides by negative two. One divided by negative two equals x plus one. Oh, that's a mistake. This one should be a 0.5. That one didn't get updated. There we go. Okay, so that's 0.5. We'll do that once more, demonstrating the undoing part uh, more so verbally than with um, uh, showing you those symbols. So for here, uh, we know that f of x plus 1 okay, is equal to negative 1. So pretend there's a negative 1 right over here. Negative 1. Subtract 1 from both sides. You get negative 2 equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1. Divide both sides by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 gives you positive 1 for your uh, this quantity, okay? And then one more step of undoing happens, okay? If you know what x plus 1 is, and we just want to get 1 by itself, you take away 1 from all these three values, right? So one, 0 minus 1 gets you to negative 1, half minus 1 gets you to negative 1 half, 1 minus 1 gets you to 0. And now from the table perspective, we can see why it goes left. OK, 
Okay, a couple steps there, thinking about explaining why it's either a left or, ex, uh, left or right direction of uh, shift, of movement. Trying to explain why that is. Uh, question so far? Nope, okay. So then here's a practice for you. The original function is the one that's in red. Oops. Okay, the original is the one that's in red. And then your goal is based on these three things, okay, I'll give you the hint right now, um, it's the up, down, left, and right are all involved here. And then your goal is to match, okay, green, purple, black, and blue. Which one's which from here? And take a couple moments, maybe type it out amongst everyone's here. So for those of you that have mics, you can talk with one another. Um, see if you can figure out this question. I have four lines, and there are four transformations uh, applied to it. And transformations are just some shifts, up, down, left, and right. How did the line move? Okay, um, I hope you're working through it, pointing to things on your screen, writing down some things. Okay, good. So here a student says f of x plus 1 is up, good. So this first one over here, oops, this first one over here, is moving up. So which one of these lines uh, matches the one that's up? f of x plus 1 is up. Red is your original. Is it purple, black, green, or blue? Well, just for, yep, um, it is the purple one. Okay, and you can see it here in the uh, y-intercepts. Purple is, in fact, the one that matches going up. So if you know which one's going up, and you are correct with that, which one's going down? Which one of these equations matches the one that's going down? No, it's not purple. So then there's green, there's black, and blue to choose from. Okay, right. These ones, you can both see that shift of one uh, here, right? Every two squares in this graph is one unit. So going down, okay, that would be this one. F of x minus one is the black one. And then you're left with these two, f of x plus, like uh, f of the quantity x plus one, okay? That has to either be green or blue. And that's where it becomes a little weird. Okay, um, we'll focus here, f of x plus one, right, f of the quantity x plus one, what does that look like? Is that one green or is it the blue one? Green and going left and right, okay. That one is the left one, good. Um, you've noticed the patterns from before and then f of x minus 1, that should be the one going right. Now I'll click the screen and hopefully we can see um, those are the equations that match up with each of them. Okay, um, so the up and down ones algebraically are a bit more obvious. It's the left and right motions when the number is next to your x. Those are a little weird. There's some kind of opposite relationship going on. Okay.
Now, with this one, okay, uh, we've studied this a lot. Um, there's shifting left, right, uh, up and down, but there's also multiplying. And we've already come across this from our first semester's study on lines, okay? When you multiply something um, by 2, you'll notice here, algebraically, we're showing, okay, everything here is being multiplied by 2. You get this equation at the very end, um, four x, <clears throat> negative 4x plus 2. What does that mean? We know it means going steeper. And then visually, you can see it becomes this green line. Um, it gets to where it needs to go a bit faster. Okay, so the slope has changed. And then this lesson, we pay attention to the features of the graph, like um, initial values, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, thinking about how those may or may not change based on transformations. Here, you notice that the y-intercepts uh, changed, but the x-intercept here stayed the same. And I'm having trouble describing this next one, okay, where you also multiply by 2, but now it's right next to the x value. So your input x is moving, uh, growing twice as fast. Still, it grows steeper, right? Its slope has increased, but now, since it's now inside <clears throat> and next to the x, there's no change in the y-intercept. It looks like this. Okay, still that steeper idea, but now the y-intercept is the one that stays that uh, stays the same, and it's the x-intercept um, that changes yeah. here. So the main part of our lesson is thinking about okay, we have these four um, transformations. When you add k in these two ways. Looks like this. That was the first set of lines we talked about. This is your up, down, left, right, represented in symbols. And then here is that okay. steepness idea, okay, multiplying by k. And k is just some number. I went over um, lines. And then you can take a couple moments to think about, OK, what happens if it's a parabola? Looks like this. And these equations. Okay. What happens if it's an exponential? It looks like so. Uh, we talked about these two okay. briefly, and um, it's not so much Algebra 1, but later, since a lot of you are going to take Algebra 2, you're going to be studying these. Uh, I might as well talk about them now. Um, two other functions we learned are square root functions and the absolute value functions. Okay. Right. Do these okay. same ideas of transformations apply for these two? And well, let's see if we can find uh, some patterns. Stay home with this COVID thing going on and just like go in when it's needed, pretty much. <laughs> So like, if there's stuff I gotta do, like Stephen uh, cool. needs anything. Yeah, yeah. So at so this point, like class, do you want to uh, want to see me just demonstrate this on Desmos? Do you want to take some moments and work on this yourself? Uh, Give me some feedback. No, the regular people are still all there. Like, the, yeah, they're still working through it. Yeah, it, it, it just doesn't okay. feel right, like, to be out. What do you want to happen like next? Stay home and, like, the government saying, like, just stay home if you can. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. Okay, no feedback. So, I'll just demonstrate a couple of these. I, if I were a student at home, this is yeah, what I would be doing mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with some of these examples. Okay. You may want to take a quick snapshot of this. So if I'm exploring, um, like in this case, it's movements of different functions. Let's say I wanted to study exponential functions. We haven't studied those in a while. So I'll take this equation that Mr. Chan's giving me. Okay, 1.5 times 3 to the power of x. And if I wanted to save some time from graphing, studying how these things move, I'd bring up Desmos, bring up my calculator, And then I'll input this function like so. Mm, copy and pasting doesn't work too well, so I have to press Shift and 6 to get the exponent looking like this. Okay, y equals all this. And then we have a familiar curve. 
we see that its initial value, its starting point is 1.5, its growth rate, it's being multiplied by 3 each time. So let's try to find an example of that. Uh, 2 is 1.5 times 9, it's something way up here. And then we think, okay, if I try to add something to this, is it going to move left or right? Let's say I add, uh, uh, let's try, maybe add 5, right? Does that pattern still hold from before? Do exponentials work just like lines? Here's your 1.5 times 3 to the power of x. Oops. And then here's my add 5. So what happened there? There's your 1.5. And then when we add 5 up here, it becomes 6.5. Okay, we see that vertical movement up. And for exponentials, we still have, okay, what next? Does it still work if we multiply this? Or let's do the other case, right? So what happens when we subtract 5? Okay, that works as we think. It moves down. The steepness or the growth rate here uh, remains unchanged. That should be the easier part. I'll turn these two off. Here's the weird one. Okay, I'm going to try to add a plus 1 uh, next to the x. Let's see if we can explain what's happening here. 3 to the power of x. And this is where I add my like plus, oops, plus five. Okay, let's try entering like this, plus five like that. And we have its friend y equals one point five times three to the power of x minus 5. Okay, a little odd. So somewhere here I should be able to find this. Okay, right there. Maybe I'll set that as a label. 5 and 1.5. Here is going to be uh, negative 5 and 1.5 change it to being blue. Black. Cool. So the adding um, if the these two transformations, okay, adding k like this and adding k just next to x works as such. And here's where it gets a little weird. Okay, we're going to multiply, okay, there's our original function, right? Let's see what happens when we multiply it by 5. I'll turn these two off. Okay, the whole thing is being multiplied by 5, and it's accompanying transformation. Now the exponent here is being multiplied by 5. Is that what I wanted to do? Yeah. Okay. So then what the heck's going on with these two um, transformations? You have your original, that's in red. Now you have the first one in green times 5 is now on the mold, on the outside, and then here, um, times 5 is next to the x. So I hope, let me try to zoom out a little bit more. And it's kind of hard to tell with exponentials here, but can you tell which one is currently the steepest out of red, green, and purple? Purple one is the steepest, right? 
your old x values are now growing like five times as fast. Where you were like at one, it now became uh, five. Where you were at two, it became 10. Um, where it was three, it now becomes 15. So you're getting to your old outputs um, five times as fast. So then you notice in this graph, okay, when this transformation is performed, this five right here that I'm highlighting, okay, that it only changes your growth rate. But then everything else stays the same. You still have the same initial value. You started here, um, but now you get there a lot faster. In contrast, when you have the whole function being multiplied by five, your initial value did change in that case. And if you notice the steepness of this one, um, it remains unchanged. Let me try to find another point. There's one, let's go up to one. So three times 1.5 is 4.5 times five is like 20 point something. Where are you? You're in red, somewhere here. All right, there's 4.5, okay. And then if you try to find it on the green, your one is right about here, 20 point something. Twenty two point five. Okay, and so on your own, if you want to study some things, you can try um, these other functions, see how they uh, move, see how they're transformed. Um, think about first, like without the graph, without Desmos showing you what's going on. Can you think about, okay, does this change move it up, down, left, and right? Does it change its growth rate either faster or slower? Um, try seeing it via symbols and algebra before going to the graphs. And so uh, if, uh, if class were normal, then uh, this is where I'd like let you all go work on these. And you think about these specific discussion questions. And uh, what's useful about this is, okay, uh, some like when we go back to vertex form, you will see like vertex form is just a transformation of your standard form or uh, factored form versions of the equations that uh, the quadratic equations you've been working with. And um, I'm kind of sad that it's talked about at the very end of the chapter and oftentimes I have to skip it because this idea you'll see throughout your math classes. Cool. So that's my lecture for today. Uh, I'll post this PowerPoint slide up on Piazza for you to look at. Um, your extra practice is thinking about the transformations that occur for these given functions, uh, exponentials and parabolas. You have your COVID practice to work on, and uh, that's all. Okay, um, you can stay back, ask me questions. I already got one about question 15 from uh, COVID-9, so we can stay back and we can talk about that. But otherwise, you're all good to go. This thing's gonna be recorded, um, and I'll upload that to the YouTube.